afternoon. You're all very welcome. I want to inform you that um, the Tony is two hours ahead of us, so we're running late. <laughs> Accordingly, uh, I would first and foremost like to welcome you, sir, uh, to this institute. But on housekeeping, could I ask all of you who have telephones on to turn them off or take them out? Um, you will know that by these rules, this uh, engagement of the ambassador with us is under Europe House rules, which is you can use all the information that you hear but can't say who said it or where you heard it. And we are going to have, I think, because of other time restrictions, just time for two questions. Is that correct? No. Thank you very much indeed. Over to you, sir. This way? That way? Well, whichever you're more comfortable with. Dear members of the Institute, Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I apologize that we're late, more than six or seven minutes. <laughs> Sorry about that. The second thing that we are really glad to be here in Ireland today, in Dublin, and it means for us quite a lot. Uh, it is quite interesting that last meeting, this kind of bilateral meeting with two prime ministers, Prime Minister from Ireland and Prime Minister from Estonia was more than 14 years ago. And today we try to, 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 to correct or to make this mistake a better way. In the world of the great Irish poet, Seamus Heaney, this could be a once in a lifetime moment when hope and history Rhyme. At the beginning of the Estonian presidency of the Council of the European Union, I expressed my hope that our presidency would be remembered as one that allowed Europe to put the crisis behind us. And once again, look optimistically towards the future. My own country, Estonia, and our people have been very lucky because our hope and history have rhymed twice in a century. In the aftermath of the World War I, when we established our statehood, and after the Cold War, when we restored our independence. Therefore, Estonia have twice had that special moment in time. And twice we have turned it into a reality. Now we are happy to celebrate our 100th anniversary in three weeks' time on the 24th of February. Our aspirations were realized again when we joined the EU in 2004. This was ach achieved during the Irish Presidency of the Council of the European Union. Our European aspiration dates back to the beginning of 20th century when young Estonian intellectuals set their motto let us be Estonians, but let us also become Europeans. The European values of partnership and solidarity have helped Estonia transform from a forcefully poor and underdeveloped country to a member of the family of innovative and successful European countries. But that transformation would not have happened without hard work and the goodwill of Estonian people. The time is right again for Europe to make big things happen on big issues, to make history. After the Brexit referendum and before key elections in Europe, the year was full of pessimism. There was fear that after several blows, 
the European Union would not entirely recover populism, protectionism, seem too strong. This would have been a disaster, not only for the European Union, but also for Estonia, for our country, as our security is based on the Western alliance and larger amounts of jobs depend on trade. In my opinion, the European Union member states have come together again and shown the world that we are strong, we are united, that we can deliver the political course set in Bratislava, Malta, Rome, and also in Thailand during the digital summit last September has allowed us to overcome this rough patch, reclaim control over migration, and restore economic growth. The Irish economic recovery is a good example, showing that European Union is moving in the right direction. As a result, Europe is now back on track. The European Union has turned a new page and focuses on global challenges that significantly affect the lives of our citizens. In my view, also, pays attention to the details to make their minds. Perhaps this change was also facilitated to our agenda, optimism, and hard work as a council presidency. When preparing the priorities, we decided not to concentrate on daily crisis management, but look at the bigger picture and longer perspective. What is actually taking place in the world? What should we do in Europe to be ready and not lag behind? So we decided to bring the digital transformation on to the attention of all European leaders. Our intention was to highlight that the digital dimension and smart IT solutions are an integral part of all EU policy areas, from fisheries to space, and they cannot be neglected. We drew attention to the fast that our future is digital. We, we, and we have to be well prepared for that starting from improving the digital skills for our citizens and addressing some emerging trends, such as artificial intelligence. We search for ways to make the European Union the ideal home for enterprises and innovators in the digital age. As the digitalization transforms sectors, we must ensure that the EU's freedom are sustainable for the digital age. What I mean is that we have to make the most of the free movement of data. Ireland gave us a lot of support in all these debates. We share this common knowledge that technological innovation makes the lives of people, companies, and our governments much more easier. I would like to thank my good colleague Tishok for his leadership and full support. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, the development of cross-border services and e-commerce as real benefits for EU citizens and our businesses with common effort from member states and institutions, we manage the complete vital parts of legislation on e-commerce. Ag agreement was reached on ending geo-blocking. We endure the transparency of prices of cross-border parcel delivery and modernized value-added tax for cross-border e-commerce. We also decided that international tax rules 
have to be updated in a way that would ensure a fair taxation of digital economy enterprises. Would you, we took a huge step forward in creating a true data economy, introducing online e-services and ensuring connectivity and cyber security. The common understanding of member states on making e-government an efficient functioning reality in Europe was confirmed in October, when the declaration of e-government was signed in Thailand. The 5G declaration signed by the ministers of 28 member states, plus Norway, will definitely provide the necessary boost for development of super-fast internet connections. An ambitious spectrum brand policy makes super-fast 5G communication, self-driving transport, the internet of things, and many, many other uh, reality. This digital single market is far from being completed, but I am convinced that thanks to good cooperation, we achieved a lot during the last past six months. And that we will be able to complete most of the work before the next European Parliament elections. Honorable audience, Europe did not only progress in digital affairs. During Estonian presidency, landmark decisions were made in defense cooperation as well, climate policy and the social dimension. They all have significant structural and long-term effects. The joint declaration of the member states for the creative of the permanent structured cooperation is a significant step in enduring Europe's safety. 25 member states in total have decided to improve defense cooperation, increase their defense expenditures, and carried out several joint projects, such as simplifying and speeding up military transport in Europe of military Schengen, as it has become known. I am proud that the European Union has demonstrated its determination to implement the Paris Agreement. Climate change will influence the freedoms and quality of life of future generations. After the spouting of Toha Amendment ratification instruments at the end of the year, European Union has shown its global leadership. In practice, it means that the member states have made forward-looking decisions that serve the common good. We have agreed on reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 43% by 2030 in energy-intensive industries. We have taken binding national greenhouse gas emission reduction targets for each member state's collectively amounting to a 30% cut in emotions by 2030 in other sectors like transport or agriculture. Furthermore, we have agreed that accounted emotion, emission from land use and forestry are entirely compensated by an equivalent removal of CO2 from the atmosphere through action in the sector. We have also set clear targets for the reduction of waste and established an ambitious long-term plan for waste management and recycling. Ladies and uh, gentlemen, by signing the Bill of Social Rights in the name of all 28 member states in Gothenburg in Sweden, we made a promise to reduce unemployment poverty and inequality together. We believe in Europe that offers equal opportunities and access to the labor markets, fair working conditions, as well as social protection and social inclusion. 
In the coming years, another important decision will be made that will affect our future in Europe. That is EU budget, starting from 2021. Estonia believes in a strong and stable European Union. For us, less Europe is not an option. Therefore, the EU budget must have the capacity to address the issues all member states are pledged to work towards in the Rome Declaration. Reducing the budget would mean foregoing the commitments we have made to our citizens. Just as Tishok advocated a strong and stable EU in his speech in the European Parliament, I also do not see any room for reducing the common budget. New priorities need financing, but traditional policies also remain important. The EU budget must have a strong focus on investments promoting productivity, competitiveness and connectivity of the EU and its member states in a globalized world. So, there are a lot of important topics we all have to openly discuss with our citizens in order to build a better future for Europe. I also know that Ireland is already doing that. I would like to congratulate you for successfully launching Citizens' Dialogue on the future of Europe. There is one more topic that I would like to address before I conclude, and this topic name is Brexit. Brexit. <laughs> this kind of small topic. We Estonians are sad, really sad to see the United Kingdom withdrawn from the EU. I'm pleased to see that negotiations progress in a constructive spirit, tackling first the citizens' rights, the financial settlement, and of course, the border in Ireland. We strongly support Ireland in their position that there can be no return to a hard border between Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. No coasts of the past should return as a result of this process. I'm sure that detailed agreements giving effects to this promise will be found during the second phase of negotiations. In, in conclusion, I see determination and opportunities coming across again in Europe. I see that now is the time when Europe makes our history. Although Estonia and Ireland are situated quite far from each other, we are quite similar in how we see the world. We have many things in common. For example, both of us have prominent authors who are similar in era and name, wild and wilde, respectively. One is world famous, the other is just famous. <laughs> but in addition to that, both of us have a forward-looking, constructive and innovative way of shaping our lives. I'm sure that our bilateral, regional, and multilateral cooperation will become even stronger. Thank you for your attention.